like he was doing LSD when it was, especially in the Israeli society, kind of a taboo, okay? And he was doing it while he was almost 70 years old. So yeah, tell us about your latest film. What was the idea behind it? How did you get inspired to do it? And what was your goal? Yeah, well, I was, the film was about this character, but this protagonist, his name is Katsetnik. This is a pseudonym, Katsetnik, the man from the camp, from the Katset, of course. And I was given his books when I was 16. Like, these books were distributed to students in Israel. It's the book, really vulgar books, really brunt and blunt uh, books about the Holocaust. And they were given away to kids. And I was one of them, I was 16. And I read a book he wrote, the uh, first book, his name, book title is Salamandra. And I thought, wow, this is something I never, like, it was unbelievable for me. And I became kind of a fan of Katsetnik. I read all his books, or I thought I read all his books. And it was super interesting for me to, to, to deal with these issues as a 16 year old. And then I grew up, and of course I forgot about everything, but Katsetnik remained in my, in my mind in a way. And then I came across a story that Katsetnik was doing LSD treatments in the 70s, and I couldn't like fill the gap between Holocaust and LSD. It was like two issues that weren't meant to, to connect. And I said, well, I need to, like something is, I don't know, something's wrong. So I went to find a book. It was actually quite difficult because it's out of print. But after a few months, I was able to put my hand on the book and I was reading it and I was like, I, I can like, I was, I was shocked for a few days. I read it twice, like I read it and then I stopped for a few minutes and then I start over again. And I was like, wow, this is like, this is amazing. And then I became a bit obsessed, of course, like every filmmaker, you need to be a bit obsessed. I was obsessed about this book and about this character and about this story. And Katsetnik had this thing about that in his life, because he was, he had two identities, one was living normal life, one was uh, the man from the cassette. So he was hiding, like his real identity, his regular identity was hiding. So he had left no archive, left no photograph, he left no diaries, no, no uh, letters. So this is how I began my research. So I had to delve into all the archives in Israel and try to find out what else can we learn about this man. So it was a long process, but um, it was a good one actually. But this is how the film was born in a way, like from this notion that those two, you know, those two issues cannot come together. And then when they did come together, I had to think, okay, I need to make a film here. So the movie is basically about this Schriftsteller, this author. Um, and we get to see how other people feel about him. We see the therapist, the wife, mm -hmm. and we can sort of deduce how you feel about him through what you left out or you let in. But in a statement or as a question, how do you personally see Katsetnik? Yeah, I think he was a complex man, that's for sure. He wasn't an easy man to deal with. I'm, I'm, I never met him, but this is the notion I get from him. But I think he was very brave. Like he was doing LSD when it was especially in the Israeli society, kind of a taboo, okay? And he was doing it while he was almost 70 years old, which is not something that many people do. Like, but he had this courage and he had this braveness to keep on searching for, for, for a cure in a way. It's not a cure because you can't cure out of PTSD. You can reduce the symptoms. But he was searching all along. And this man made, like, quote, unquote, made a career by being the man from the other planet. He was very famous in Israel. He got rewards and he got was really high attention from the public. And then to sit there when you were like 75 and say, well, I was wrong all my life, takes a lot of courage. And I think he was very, he was a brave man, like, like I said. I think he was searching for the truth all his life. And eventually I think he got to a place where he felt more relief about. But it was a process and I think yeah, I think many people kind of gave up on, 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 on that. Many Holocaust survivors mainly, because I think the trauma was so severe that trying to think about a way to improve your life was out of, out of mind in a way. But he didn't. Like he, he was writing, like his first book was written three months after he was released from the camp. 
was he was starting right away to deal with the trauma and he was able to, to change his life according to what happened and then to, to make an effort of you know of trying to, to make things better so for me first of all he, he was a brave man and I'm really sad actually that his message was forgotten that's that's another that's I wasn't out doing the film for you know to to bring him to life in a way or to bring him back to the Israeli society conscious or mind or, or uh, topics but for me, this is one byproduct of the film that I really like, that we can rethink about, about this character, rethink about trauma, rethink about Holocaust survivors. So I think, again, yeah, it was very, it was very unique and brave. Um, some critics argue that Katsetnik's work is a little bit sensationalized, mm -hmm. not based on pure fact. Yeah. How do you feel about that as a documentary filmmaker, an art form that's supposed to be based on facts? Uh, that's two questions actually because you're asking whether <laughs> documentaries should be based on facts yeah or is it really maybe i should reformulate it no no it's okay it's a good question yeah. let me uh, let me answer it um there's this def definition that one of the people in the film made between truth and facts okay and i think they're not they're connected but they're not the same you can say things that are wrong but they are very truthful and you can do the and you can do the opposite, okay? And I think, yeah, Katsetnik wrote about things that historically are wrong. There is no House of Dolls, for example, this Glathol house that he describes in his second book, The House of Dolls, was was never existed. Like, actually, the stu the studies are still on the under like still running, but most probably there are none. There never was a um, House of Dolls, okay? But there is a certain truth that he can deliver while writing about things that historically are wrong, okay? And as an artist, and he was an artist after all, yeah, he was a Holocaust survivor, he wrote his own experience, but at the bottom line, he was an artist, okay? And he wanted to convey something else. He wanted to us to think about the human body. He wanted us to think about abuse, okay? So this is the way he was talking about abusing the body. This is how he decided to talk about a violation of the body, okay? So he wrote, you can see it as a metaphor, okay? You don't search for historical facts on a metaphor. And for me, as a documentary as well, I won't lie to my viewers, never, okay? As an editor, as a director. But I think sometimes the truth is more meaningful than to be just really on the point with historical facts. I want to emphasize this point. We can't lie, okay? That's, that's for sure, okay? That's really important and I should say it again. But you should be able to, to tell the truth in a way. It's more important. And we have to remember that at the end, we're not historian, we're filmmakers. And filmmakers have a different approach and different destiny and different goal to achieve. We want people to, to rethink about things. We want people to, you know, to reimagine. You want people to have to try to cope with things they don't want to, okay? And we're not historians. So, again, a thin line, you shouldn't cross it, but you should always walk near the line. It's more interesting for filmmaking.